Heisman Trophy winner Mike Rozier was Mr. Everything last fall for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. But eight weeks ago, Mike Rozier became Mr. Everything for the Pittsburgh Maulers of the USFL. Tonight, Mike Rozier and the Maulers make their national TV debut on ESPN. But they'll have to take on the USFL champion Michigan Panthers, who rolled this Novo Boyovich field goal to victory Monday night against Chicago. Tonight, it's Mike Rozier and the Maulers against the champion Panthers on ESPN. Saturday night USFL game on ESPN is from the Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan. The Pittsburgh Maulers play the defending league champions, the Michigan Panthers. And good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Simpson in Pontiac, Michigan. One week, well, not even a week ago, last Monday night we were here. Michigan successfully opened its season with a last-second win over the Chicago Blitz. A Bojovic field goal won it as the last second ticked off the clock. On the other hand, Pittsburgh, a brand-new team, unveiled the Heisman Trophy winner Mike Rozier out of a rainstorm in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You know what happened. Only 27 yards out there. Don Heinrich, Mike Rozier, millions of dollars. But I think it takes one thing to be a good runner in any level of competition. That is an offensive line. Well, it's been said very often, Jim, that it's one in the trenches, and it's no different here this evening. They've had some problems with Pittsburgh's offensive line. They've had some injuries. It's the hardest thing to get the coordination together, and I think tonight will be a much better test than what the Pittsburgh Maulers had a week ago in Oklahoma. The Pittsburgh Maulers and Michigan Panthers. Pittsburgh won the toss and will kick off. Len Durano on the sidelines along with Joe Pendry, the youngest head coach in pro football at 36, and the veteran Jim Stanley, an assistant long time in the pros. Before that, a head coach at Oklahoma State. And there's Bojovic. Won the ball game last week with his last second field goal. You saw William Miller, the deep man, number 22. Bojovic sends Miller into the end zone, and he is not going to bring it out. So bring the ball out to the 20-yard line. First and 10 for the Marlins. Glenn Carano, who spent all those years, eight of them with the Dallas Cowboys, will be at quarterback. Mike Rozier, number 30. The Heisman Trophy winner out of Nebraska, the running back. Walt Easley, number 46. He was the fullback, a backup fullback on the San Francisco Super Bowl team that played at Super Bowl in the stadium. Potts, number 88. And Ricky Martin, number 81, the wide receivers. And Kimichick, 85, the tight end. In the patched up line, Hickman and Fields, the tackles. Loman and Lukens, the guards. And Jeff Harper at center. That's Kimichick going to the other side of the line of scrimmage. Carano to throw on first down. Has time, so he's going to run with the ball. He ran ten times last week. And Larry Bethea, who also played for Dallas, number 79, makes the stop. Padgett, 99. Hughes, 98, with Dave Tipton, the nose tackle out of there because of injury. Bethea, 79, the front three for Michigan. Edwards, 53, Bentley, 50, Pennywell, the captain, 59, Corker, 57, the linebackers, Oliver Davis, 21, Clarence Chapman, 22, the corners, David Greenwood, 31, at strong safety, John Arnott, 25, at free safety. Good coverage over there by Clarence Chapman as uh, Carano really had nobody to throw the ball to. And you saw Rozier standing along the sidelines and this three-wide receiver offense. Martin comes to the side. Flags down, I believe, Martin... Jumped offside. Looked like an illegal formation. He Yo was in motion. Pendry. And there's the first yellow flag of our first Saturday night telecast here on ESPN. A legal procedure or formation charged against the Pittsburgh Maulers. Losers last week in that rainstorm, 7-3. to three. By the way, there was a game played this afternoon. Illegal motion. Number 81. That's what Martin who did jump offside. And in overtime, Denver had to go to overtime to take Oklahoma 17-14.
Martin set outside the other flanker, and at the last moment, he moved up on the line of scrimmage. He has to set for a second. He did not. Second down and nine to go from the 21. time again and hits his man that is Gary Greg Anderson out of the backfield and Anderson who played last year for the Birmingham Stallions has the first down across the 30 yard line check that that's Sean Potts 88 instead of Anderson 80 in any event Robert Pennywell number 59 made the tackle he had a great game last week overshadowed perhaps by Ray Bentley who had eight solo tackles and two assists against the blitz they usually send in the plays with Sean Potts and Greg Anderson the wide receivers now they just sent it in and brought Rozier back into the lineup no score early on Anderson wide to the left And that is easily the big pullback getting a yard or two, and that is all. Comes from the school where Joe Pedry went and played football until he got injured. That's the University of West Virginia. Mike Edwards, a linebacker, and Walt Easley exchanging a little bit of uh, emotion here early in this football game as they pushed around a little and, uh, <laughs> and then chose to walk back to the huddle as discretion is the better part at this stage. Walt Easley has gone out. Mike Rozier is the lone setback. Three wide receivers. They've used that all along. Hawks in motion. Carano on second down. Dumps it out to Rozier. Rozier almost stumbles, but gets across the 40-yard line. Will pick up a four yards. That will be third down and four to go. Ray Bentley made the tackle. There is Mike Rozier. Well, as we talked in the open that they're going to try and get the ball to Rozier as he sets up in a little screen out to the left side. Gets the ball all right, but as frequently will happen, you can get those cleats kind of tangled up on that artificial surface. And before he had a chance to make the kind of cut he wanted to, he kind of stumbled into the pile. I tell you, Don, it must be a vacation for them though, after that rainstorm of last week in Oklahoma. Third down. And a long three. Whoops, I do believe... Someone's offside, ball not caught, or not, breaks up the pass, intended for Kimichick, the tight end, but a flag went down, there was movement on both sides of the line of scrimmage. And I want to tell you one thing, <laughs> oh man, John Corker was coming, no one picked him up, he, I don't know if he recognized that anybody was offside, but he wasn't going to slow down, we're going to get the call here in a minute, he just leveled Glenn Carano, I'll tell you, he stiffened his spine with that one. Wesley Ward is our referee tonight, and he'll tell us about this first penalty against the Panthers. He can get that microphone on. Offside, defense, first down. Throws the ball out to the 47-yard line. First down. Toronto's got to be looking around seeing in that huddle the first thing before he calls the play is, hey, fellas, let's pick him up because that, that smarts a little. Potts and Martin both to the left side. Here's Rozier out of the tailback spot. Good pursuit. And right there is Mike Edwards, number 53, the first man to get to him. Edwards rolled out. Nobody threw a block on Edwards at all, and he just rolled toward the sidelines with Rozier and made the tackle. Conventional pitch. They'll pull the offensive lineman with it, trying to come around to get out in front of it. Gets the lead block by Easley. Not bad, but perfect position. Mike Edwards, 53, you see him to the outside. He's not going to let Rozier outflank him at that stage. Played it very, very well and shut it down. You could see Al Kimichick, the tight end, miss his block and go all the way out and get in on it at the end, but it was too late. Third down and 12. Lorano <laughs> puts it out here for Anderson. Who's got the ball inside the 25? Greg Anderson's second catch of the night. He had three catches last week in the rainstorm. Starter last year, as we said, for the Birmingham Stallions. And Carano was right on the money. Oliver Davis made the tackle. Greg Anderson was the leading receiver a week ago where he had three catches for a total of 23 yards. That time, not well played by Oliver Davis on the corner, who had managed to pick up an interception against that blitz club on that Monday night game that you did Jim but I'll tell you one thing right there he did not play it well and it was a good second effort and concentration on Anderson's part 32 yard pickup Mark Lowell goes 
out wide to the right. Tight end, Ricky Martin, joins him to the right. Anderson to the left. And straight ahead goes easily and easily gets down near the 20-yard line. Anderson's a big man, 6'1", 226, and moves the ball down to the 20-yard line. Larry Bethea and Ray Bentley in on the tackle. It's second down and long, about seven to go. Should be a pretty good matchup inside, although the Maulers didn't get a whole lot out of Jeff Harper, who uh, is working across from Alan Hughes, Harper being the center. Hughes, formerly the defensive end a year ago, has been moved to the nose tackle because of an injury to Dave Tipton. No score, nine and a half minutes to go, first quarter. Maulers have had the ball throughout the ball game. Rozier back in. Rozier's got the ball and some blocking in front of him. Rozier picks up the first down and nine or ten yards. And gets the ball inside the 15-yard line. Bentley, the inside linebacker on the left side, again made the tackle. Good individual effort, too, right there by Rozier. Mark Raw, the tight end on that side, was trying to get a lot uh, a block. He was blocking uh, as well as he possibly could, but he isn't big as tight ends go at 6'3", 215. He was fighting for his life, and Rozier turned it up well. Ball is inside the 12, and there's some confusion now in the Maulers' huddle. Raul started to go out, and then remembered it's time to come back in, and it's Rozier who's going out. Five seconds on the play clock. There's Easley, the fullback, and Easley gets inside the 10, with John Corker hanging on, along with Ronnie Padgett. Second down. Good job by Easley as he wanted to come off the right side. You see that everybody tends to overplay a little bit from the backside. 57, John Corker coming in to hit Easley, but a good cut by Easley as he breaks it up the middle coming right at you. Ball is on the seven. It is second down and six. Martin wide to the right. Greg Anderson with two catches thus far wide left. Rogier is not in the game. Corano. Flips it on. There he's got his man, but a fine defensive play made by John Arnaud. It was intended for Mark Rao, number 83, and Arnaud, number 25, knocked it down. He had a ball Monday night in his hands for an interception and a touchdown and dropped it. Well, as Carano drops back, he really doesn't see Arnaud coming across. Arnaud playing it perfectly to get that hand in there. The ball thrown a little bit behind him as Raw was reaching back for it, but a fine play by Arnott as he drove on that football. Makes the coverage calls back there, so it's like he knew it was coming. He's got the same jump down he had last Monday night when he missed one. Carano being chased, puts it high in the air and out of the end zone, and that's all he could do there. Being chased, the flag is down, and Padgett or Corker, one of the two, may have roughed Carano, and if so, it's a first down. Well, that was awfully close, Jim, because... That's what it is. Carano was going to get rid of it any way he could, which will give them an automatic first down at this stage, but he was really just putting it out of the end zone, and both defenders were so close to him that that, that was really something of a questionable call. As you see Carano going back, he's throwing off balance, and the momentum... Well, you know, it's somewhat questionable. Corker probably could have pulled off on him a little bit, but he figured he got that close. He was going to get a lick. It was going to cost him. Foul. Roughing the passer. Number 57 on the defense. That's a first down. <laughs> Corker's right there allowing him point right at him. First down on goal to go. The bigger thing is 748 left in this first quarter, and the Panthers of Michigan have not touched the football yet. Well, that's probably the best thing that... Uh, even though Pittsburgh's defense is probably the strength of their club at this stage of their football season, is to not let that high-powered offense of the Panthers get in action. I tell you, they'd love to score just to say we've scored our first USFL touchdown. They only got a field goal in the rain last week. Rozier diving and gets another yard, and that is all. It is second down and goal to go. Corker is somewhere down the bottom along with John Arnaud. Coming off the right side, it's zone blocking straight ahead, a 6-1 defense, six down lineman, Rozier, not much movement by the offensive line, but the right side is the strongest part of the Pittsburgh offensive unit, so they went that way, Rozier tried to hurdle over the top. Second down, the ball is up to two.
Rozier again does not get it. Oliver Davis at least signals he does not get it. And he's the cornerback for Michigan. It'll be third down and inches to go. As they get closer to the goal line, watching their goal line practices yesterday and talking with Jim Stanley, they go to the 6-1, and inside of the 2, they keep tightening it up a little bit more. That time, Jeff Harper, the center, got through there in good fashion. Normally, the defensive tackles are going to try and keep him from getting any kind of uh, daylight to lead that block, but they got a little bit out of it. They've only got an inch or so to go. Rozier! Touchdown! Mike Rozier has scored his first USFL touchdown, as have the Pittsburgh Maulers. And they marched the ball 80 yards. Got a big play when Corker was called for roughing the passer. Once again, just a lead block going off that right side. Easily 46 out in front of it. The Harper 58 helping to the right side with Joe Lukens. Rozier, with good jumping ability, takes it up over the top. Eight minutes and 25 seconds. The ball is held on to that football. Well, I always say the best defense is a good offense, Jim, and they showed it there, keeping it uh, as long as they did in time of possession. Tony Lee just signed out of the University of Toledo, replacing Mike Mickey Barilla. Will try his first extra point of his pro career, and he's got it. Same replay you see there that uh, Harper going to the onside. Defensively, all the linemen just going to the ground, sort of submarine, just trying to get underneath it. The right side is what Pendry said he was going to feature to go that way. You see him kind of trying to get down low. They don't get a whole lot of movement, but they force the defensive line to get in the way and give Rozier a chance to turn and take it over the top. 7 nothing Pittsburgh. Ready to receive the kickoff of Tony Lee. A surprising beginning to this expansion team's game with the defending league champions. This will be John Williams out of Wisconsin with the ball at the five. 15, 20, out near the 30-yard line. Fine return by John Williams. Craig Walls made the tackle, a 24-yard return. And now for the first time, we'll see Bobby Bear number 11, John Williams, 40, scheduled to start, although we'll see a lot of Terry Miller. Albright coming down 67. He's generally one of the first people down on the coverage. He gets picked off there, gets a block. He gets nailed at that stage by, by Sean Potts, but he bounces right back up. Good second effort to get in on the play. In the backfield, John Williams, number 40. Ken Lacey, our MVP last Monday night, number 28. Carter to the right and Derek Holloway to the left. And that is John Williams. Carried the ball four times last week. There's a scoring drive, 80 yards, with Rozier technically a one-yard dive, really a couple of inches. Godfrey and Osmond are the tackles tonight. Wiska and Penny, the guards for Michigan. Radloff at center. I'm sure you're aware Tom Dornbrook, former Pittsburgh Steeler, the right guard is out perhaps for the season. Tyrone McGriff, the left guard, is still out with a pulled muscle. So Michigan has juggled in its offensive line, as have the Pittsburgh Maulers. Second down, five to go. The ball at the 34. Almost a 35. Oops. John Williams gets away from some of them, but that's all. Lacey, Abair, and Williams had an unscheduled meeting about seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. You have to wonder a little bit, even though Abair's had a year behind him going into his second season, if the fact that he reported late makes him a little bit rusty with the ball handling back there. Bear stepping back. He wanted an underneath handoff, so I'm sure it wasn't his fault. It looked like Lacey went the wrong way, obviously, as they wanted to run that underneath handoff sweep. Third down now, and six. Bear yet to throw. And to John Williams, they're going to run the football, and Williams is not well. I don't know whether he got the first down or not. All depends on where they mark the ball. Had to get it out near the 41, and I don't think he has. Great block by the offensive left guard, Jeff Wiska, getting out in front of Williams on that sweep. Stanley choosing to cross him up a little bit. And he said just prior to the game, despite having spent a couple of days with him and talking with him at great length, I said, are you changing your thinking, Jim? 
He said, no, we're going to run at him. I want to see if we can move that football on the ground, and then we'll decide whether we're going to go to the air. David Greenwood last week, one, it does not show in the graphic. As you take a look at Reggie Butts deep, he had a kick blocked for a safety. Could have been a touchdown, but Chicago misplayed it. Butts will get a start on this one from the 21. He's got some speed, but gets out across the 25 to about the 28, and that is all. I think you can see Kyle Borland making the tackle. 3.45 to go, first quarter. It's the Maulers who lead. First and 10 for Pittsburgh on their own 28. They open home next Sunday, and it's already a sellout. Potts in motion, Durant will throw on first down. Gonna put it up deep for Anderson, running under the ball if he can get to it. He was running around Oliver David Rozier. A little bit of running room, then he gets three or four yards, and that is all. Robert Pennywell, number 59. Ronnie Padgett, number 99, down at the bottom, and you can see also Ray Bentley getting up. He is usually around the football for these Panthers. Three minutes to go, first quarter, 7-0 Pittsburgh. He really is a, a couple of, a, a quick reading. He has a couple of quick reading linebackers in Pennywell and Bentley. Bentley was 10 tackles a week ago. And Pennywell, who calls the defensive signals, they sit a little bit deeper. They're about five yards deep for inside linebackers on a 3-4 defense. Third and seven from just over the 31. Durano. Look at this. Sean Potts has the first down. But when I say look at this, Rozier was kept in the backfield to block for Durano. Threw his block and Durano completed the pass to Sean Potts. First well, down. It's nothing new for blocking for Rozier, but Corker at 6-6. Uh, six, six, you know, you notice Rozier sticking his headgear right in the numbers, and there is a distinct difference at 6'6 six, six and, and roughly uh, six feet, but he got right where he should be to take the leverage away from Corker. Big third down play for Corrado and the Maulers from the 41, first down. Martin to Rozier. Rozier doesn't get much, and you can see Kyle Borden. Or is that Mike Edwards, number 53, a flag is down on the play. And I believe it's going to be for one of the rare times tonight against the Maulers. And the fans love that because they figure their team has been unfairly penalized thus far. Corker immediately signaling holding to the sidelines. After he was called for roughing the passes that <laughs> kept their drive alive. He wants to let Jim Stanley know that I'm not the only guy that uh, gets caught out there doing holding. Something. Number 85 on the offense. Still first down. Al Kimchick, the tight end, being called. He played for Joe Pendry here at the Michigan State, not too far away in Lansing, but... He's got to do all he can at 214 and 6'2". He's really an undersized tight end. First down and 20 to go. I just thought. Rozier, Nebraska, Heisman Trophy. Marcus Dupree, Oklahoma, big rivals. Today signed with New Orleans. They're both in the USFL. Here's where Michigan really wants to play defense. Bottle them up, get the ball back. But Toronto puts it out there, and Kim Chick has it for about eight yards across the 35 to the 37-yard line where Mike Edwards is again in on the tackle. He's the outside linebacker over there on the left side, and nearly everything that the Maulers have done tonight has been right-handed, with the exception of the long passes down the left side to Greg Anderson. Well, corano has been around long enough. He doesn't try and get it back all in one shot. At that time, with a little motion, they had... Uh, Corker, who was moved out, he had to come back with the motion coming across the backfield. He dumped it out to Kimchek. Second down. Emmett's caught at 15 to go. Toronto. Anthony Durant shows an experience there. Looking for a man coming to go deep. Now if he throws the ball, for a while he had a man open. Rao. But he's running with the ball. Rao did get behind his man. Downfield, Toronto didn't see it. Ran him out of bounds. The ballers have the ball now at the 45, and it's third down and six. Well, Glenn Carano did a good job. He ran an awful long ways. I'll tell you, he's, he's puffing a little down there right now in order to pick up the yardage he did. He got the right reaction by waving him upfield, but then he didn't throw it. As Anderson turns around, he is wide open. Carano sees him, but he's running to his left. He's a little out of control in order to throw the football. And then as he turns upfield, Carano says, nope, I'm going to keep it. Well, Raul was wide open down the other side. Last week against Oklahoma, Carano gained more yardage on fewer carries than Rozier. 
Toronto is going to run. It. Oh, he's going to fall down. And Alvin Hughes jumps on top of him. It's fourth down. They'll have to kick it away. You know, Rozier tripped at about that same spot on the previous series of downs by the Marlins. Yes, he did. Well, this is a new rug this year, Jim. You know, I don't, uh, I don't know what the change is significantly. I know it's got a better cushion on it. I know they roll it out. It doesn't have the zippers in it. You think right. the pudding would be better? Seams in it at all? You think the pudding would be better? But they got got their their short cleats stuck in under the type of shoes that they use on this type of surface. Larry Swider on it for the Cardinals back in 1980. Gets a good kick away. Anthony Carter is going to take a fair catch at the 16 yard line. And so 49 seconds to go in the first quarter. Good block by the up back right there. Number uh, 50, 58. He does a, does a good job stepping up and giving him a pop. Half a minute to go in this first quarter. And a man on the right side jumped for Pittsburgh. It looked like it might have been Osmond who jumped offside. 23 seconds to go. All kinds of whistles. A yellow flag down. And they'll sort this out. I don't think there's any doubt that Bobby Bear was automatic or changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Pittsburgh lined up. Unlike the the Michigan Panthers, Pittsburgh uses a conventional 4-3 with two tackles and two defensive ends. You don't see it too often. Uh, a week ago, they happened to catch it against the Blitz, but they overshifted it to give it up front. Right guard on the offense, decline, second down. Well, that was Penny, and of course they declined it because there's no gain in it's second down 10. I think there's a little confusion, too, because when they overshifted that line to the odd, then they jumped back to the, to the even 4-3 look. And Penny, a little anxious, jumped across. They'll try it again. Not much there, is it? Ken Lacey, who had 98 yards last week, is nailed, and the flag goes down again as Mike McKibben, a former New York Jet, put Lacey down. Well, the Panthers had a dozen penalties a week ago for about 76 yards or so and looks like they're sort of taken up where they left off that's what's really frustrating from a coaching standpoint as well as the offense you try to get some continuity you try and get something working you run nice a play man. this will be against naturally Pittsburgh you know we saw the same thing when George Adams Arizona team lost to Tampa Bay last night Tampa Bay played very well the George Adams team made a lot of penalties number 53 on the defense Still second down. McKibben. Second down. But let's call it seven now as they move the ball out to the 19-yard line. Well, the Panthers have a lot of poise in that ball club, as does Abear, their leader. But still in all, when you're kind of getting knocked back with penalties, you're, you lose the tempo of what you want to do offensively. John Williams, and he's not going to get the first down. And now another flag goes down as Derek Holloway was mixing it up across the way. Looked like David Langloy, number 24, over there with it. Langloy is an interesting situation in safety. He had the only interception a week ago against Oklahoma. Holloway. Personal foul. Number 29 on the defense. Oh, that's First John foul. Short. Yep. Number 47 on the offense. At the end of the play, it's third down. Third down. You know, since we came back, there were 39 seconds to go in this quarter. This is the fifth play. And there's still seven seconds left on the clock, and nobody's even picked up a first down. Yeah. And they've been kind of thrashing around down there deep in the Michigan Panther territory. And Jim Stanley probably said, let's get this quarter over with and start fresh. Well, they had a tough time last week with the Chicago Blitz. He used to be the Arizona Wrangler. Third down and three to go. All on the 23. Hey, there's some throw on third and three. Looks it over and has his man for the first down. And that is big Mike Cobb. And that ends the first quarter. 
It was all the Maulers, but now, for the first time, Michigan has picked up its first first down. At the first quarter, 7-0 Pittsburgh. Hey, there to throw on first down. As his man across the way, John Williams, who steps out of bounds at the 36-yard line. A pickup of seven on the play at second down and three. Bill Yancey was the cover man, number 21 over there with him. Good job. Good job by Bobby Aber. He wanted to go upfield as he had his concentration looking that way, but he reacts well and reads well. He adjusts. As we get the first quarter stats, obviously Pittsburgh controlling it both ways, passing and rushing for 103 yards. Michigan just a bare 19 yards and roughly three minutes of possession. You could have bet me before we began this game they'd only have 19 yards at the end of one quarter. With that offense, from the 36, second and short. Here's Williams coming this way, and he's got a first down and more. Drag down from behind as he gets near midfield. Ken Dombrowski came back to make the stop along with Dan Short. This is a real difficult sweep to run. Watching from the end zone, you get the sort of cross action back there. You get a pretty good block on the outside. Penny 74 initially got that first block, 75 out in front, a little hesitant. You got to make a decision. Go hit somebody. In this case, he had a chance to pick up short and waited. Now, Carter, on the other hand, Jim Stanley says is the best blocking wide receiver he's ever been associated with at 162 pounds. Look at him stay after that corner. He's blocked. He is fair caught a punt, but nobody's thrown to Carter yet tonight. Hey, there with some room. Gives the ball to Lacey instead. Oh, look at Ken Lacey down the sideline. Holmes misses him and then trips him up as he goes by. Nobody at all. The linebackers and everybody on the right side were wiped out. And Lacey rambles for 33 yards on a first down. Well, you wouldn't think he was hurt. He came into this game with a little bit of a sore ankle. He had a bit of a sore knee. 74, Ray Penny, just going out of your picture to the left. Watch him get the block right there. Great job on Dave Langloy to spring Lacey. And now it's a foot race down the sideline. Trying to pick up a block by Holloway to get back, but... Lacey making a cut to the inside gets a couple of extras. First down from the 18. Michigan looking to tie the game. There's Ken Lacey, the MVP last Monday night. And their win over Chicago. Williams goes the other way. Kitty out in front of him. Williams gets inside the 15. They're running from sideline to sideline and have moved this football down inside the 15-yard line. Well, they weren't having a whole lot of success inside. As Stanley said, that's where he wanted to start out, but he also wanted to run those sweeps as much as he could. And I'll tell you one thing, Jim. It's a nice feeling to have as a coach when he can take Ray Penny, an all-pro offensive tackle, replace Tom Dornbrook, an all-pro offensive guard, moving Penny to guard, getting out in front like he did there and just blocking out the lights here in the Silver Dome to spring the ball carrier. Williams picked up seven yards, second down and three from the 11. Williams goes nowhere there, but edges them closer to a possible first down. It'll be third down and very short. Hother made the tackle. Hother's number is 57, and Bruce came out of the University of New Hampshire, was a Cowboys special teamer for a long while, backing up uh, Bob Brunick on defense, and they thought that he might be able to play as a starter this coming season, but instead he went with Pittsburgh. And that a is a familiar, excuse me, Don, figure of Novo Bojovic with his garlic and a glove <laughs> on his hand. He won the ball game last week with a 20-yarder with one second to go. Look at Lacey right up the middle. He's got the first down and goal to go inside the five. Saving tackle by Langloy with help from a given. But all of a sudden, that patched-up offensive line is really doing a job for Michigan. And right there, Radloff blocking to the right side, as you saw in 55. Jeff Wiska coming across in a short trap type of an action. Good job up front. And I'll tell you one thing. When you lose a couple guys like McGriff and Dornbrook at guards, an all-pro and a second-team all-pro in McGriff, and you can replace them with uh, Wiska and Penny and Radloff out in front of it, they just blew that line back defensively. And Clancy goes off the field, shaking up on the play. First and goal to go. Not much there. And McKibben makes the stop. And that is Terry Miller carrying the ball for the first time. Miller gives them some speed. He only carried the ball 
10 times all last year for Denver, but Jim Stanley figures that he's got some speed, and when he starts getting into the offense and running those corners, as Lacey and Williams have done, he can turn it on. Yes, and he said he had a good preseason and training camp, that he was really much sharper coming into this season than he had been, at least in his opinion, in the past. Michigan looking to tie this game up. They trailed by seven early in the second quarter. Lives go down, and you can see the movement. There goes Lacey. You can see the movement, and I believe it came. The most visible sight that I had came from the Pittsburgh side of the line of scrimmage. I did not see a, pit, a, a Michigan man move. Looked like David Graham, the defensive tackle, as they are in a 6-1. Six down people closed in tight, but Bear was smart. He did the right thing. He knew that he had a free play if it worked for him. If not, it comes back, they get the penalty, and they get one over. Outside, so on the defense, still second down. Looking again, we see that it is coming from that left side, the defensive tackle, as he anticipated the count. That's smart on Bear. He's probably mixing up his snap count in there, not going the same time, the same numbers to keep off balance. Second down from the two. Now, who moved there? Osmond, the offensive right tackle. Right tackle. Tony Os Osmond. He, he anticipated the wrong way that time. Osmond is playing right tackle because Penny had to move from there to guard to replace Tom Dornbush. Well, you know, Osmond has come on well for him. When he came to camp initially uh, a year ago, he was a defensive end. They didn't feel he was going to make it there. So they moved him to offensive tackle. The fact that Penny's had to go to guard, Osmond's getting more work, but right there he just anticipated a little too quick. Looked like Penny was about to move also. Yes, they were rocking a little bit in there. Now they get their wide receivers back in. Derek Holloway, 29, and Anthony Carter, number one, both go to the right side as they come up with a second down seven. Part of the man in motion. Bear looking the other way and throws for the touchdown. The big tight end, Mike Carr. First touchdown of the year. It's 7-6. Well, Jim, when you talk of mismatches and big Mike Cobb at 6'5", 255, had a shot with Cincinnati. They wanted to play him at tackle. He said, I'm not going to play there. I'm a tight end. His size right here on 29, the strong safety, Dan Short. You see Short going to the ground. Actually, like a lot of good receivers will do, and particularly tight ends, they get that little shove off, a little bit of a push, and he put, he put Short right to the ground. You just wonder where the linebacker was on that play. But Jovic comes in. They had the extra point. And we've got a tie game. Ten minutes, ten seconds to go in the first half. Coming off, looking right through Bear as he drops back. Good move by him to look out to the right. He knows he's going to throw to the left side. A good release at that stage. And actually, there were two people open over to that side. Holloway two was also over there. there. And one defensive back only. It's a tie ball game. William Miller, the deep man. And Leovich to kick off of this tie ball game. Second quarter. Miller can come up almost to the 10-yard line to take this. And gets across the 25 to the 27-yard line. There is Bobby Hebert, most valuable player in the USFL championship game. First down for Pittsburgh, expansion ball club at their own 27. Carano dumps it out here, and easily can't do anything with it. Matter of fact, he loses on the play as Robert Pennywell, number 59, comes over to make the tackle. Good reaction by Pennywell to get out there as quickly as he did on kind of a little bit of a screen. It didn't set up very well, and there again, Joe Pendry, the head coach, said that he wants to start utilizing the short nickel-dime type passes to move the football, but he's changed his style here. Instead of going with just the one back and three wide receivers, he's gone to the conventional backs, now three wides. All plays are brought in by wide receivers. Second down and 12. Milano puts it out and has a man, Anderson, first down at the 43-yard line. Oliver Davis was trailing him, but Anderson was clearly in the clear, and Carano found it. Well, Anderson's having a good night, Don. Yes, he is. It shows you what 
a quarterback can do with Carano's experience, having sat down there in Dallas as much as he did. While he didn't get to play a great deal, he, he had the advantage of working in practice and spending his time in the classrooms to, to understand defenses. When he got a long time like that, he sat back there, looked the whole situation over, and then laid it out to Anderson. Remember, he set all kinds of passing records that University of Nevada, Las Vegas, UNLV, when Ron Meyer, now with the Patriots, was the head coach there. Yes, and his number one receiver was his twin brother. Quick pitch, Mike Rozier, looking for his first big run of his USFO career, and gets out near midfield, picking up six yards on the carry. And it's second down and four to go. Fine block out in front of it, too, by Donnie Hickman. Corker coming across as Hickman, the tackle, pulls out. And on the other other side of it, you get some help over there by Al Kimchek. But good job of blocking, and you see the quickness of Rozier breaking up in behind Jim Loman, the guard. High ball game, seven all, seven and a half minutes to go, first half. Second down, four to go from the 49. First man through easily, picks up a couple of yards, and that is all. You can see Larry Bethea, former Dallas Cowboy, up top. We're looking to see who gets up from underneath all that pile. And it's Ronnie Padgett, who was a leading down lineman tackler a year ago for these Michigan Panthers. Panthers, as we said in the opening, opened up with a win 9-7 over Birmingham a year ago. And then turned around and lost four in a row. Then rebuilt that offensive line, became a force, won the championship. Third down and a yard and a half. Toronto's going to throw for it. Looking as his man Martin first down at the 31-yard line. Ricky Martin with Clarence Chapman giving him good coverage makes the catch. And once again, give credit to the offensive line of the Ballers because it was really a quick rhythm, quick rhythm type of a pass. He wanted to let it go in a hurry, but the defense of the Panther Club went into double coverage. Both the upbacks, Clarence Chapman in this place, was playing him close, but a good job by Martin to get around him. Carano laying it in there. That's a tough pass to throw against the zone. It's got to be in between the upback, Chapman in this case, and David Green with the strong safety. Laid it in perfect. Good touch. They have put the nose of the football on the 30 as Anderson and Martin both go wide to the left. First down. A fake to Rogier. Toronto in trouble. Throws short. He had Anderson coming across the field and Ricky Martin down at about the goal line. It was in between. Alan Hughes was putting a lot of pressure on Glenn Carano. It's second down and ten. And Hughes was getting it from the from the inside. They got good penetration. You know, coaches talk about it. You don't always have to get to the passer. They they have another category they've added in recent years that they call hurries. And in that instance, it forced Carano to have to throw in a hurry. And at the same time, David Greenwood, the strong safety, was blitzing from the outside. So Carano was stuck in the pocket, but couldn't really step up and did not have good vision to get the ball in there. Hots to the right. And Mark to the left. Remember, they bring in all plays with the wide receivers, so they're constantly changing. Second down, 10. Rogier gives the ball to Martin. Here comes Martin. Flags are everywhere as he's run out of bounds. As he came to this side, flags were everywhere. Tried to decoy everybody to follow Rogier to the left. And instead, Ricky Martin came to the right. Well, Joe Pendry said they had the reverse in. They were going to use it. That keeps people at home. Joe Lukens, the right guard, unfortunately got out in front of it. You'll see Rozier going to the left. He makes the handoff back to Ricky Martin. We may be able to pick up Joe Lukens, the right guard on the ground, right there as he's kind of rolling around. And then when he lost the block, he put, he put his arm out, got the little hook in, and that's when all of the officials saw that one. It was right in the open. Holding. Number 64 on the offense, still second down. That's Lucas, four-time All-American at Ohio State. And the referees, we told you, with his career is Wesley Ward. Moved the ball back to the 38-yard line. It is still second down. This time, about 18 to go. Jim, you know, he was also a Big Ten academic All-American. You think he was trying to figure he could slip one by him there, try to out-clever him a little, and got caught? Both wide receivers to left. Holman is the back in there now. First time he's played out of West Virginia State. It's Carano. Carano throws it out, and Greenwood just 
upended the intended receiver, Kimchick. David Greenwood, a year ago, was a free safety. made all league there. They moved into a strong safety this year. What an excellent athlete he is. He read that one perfectly. 6-16 to go in this first half at the Silver Dome. We're live on ESPN, the first of our Saturday night football games throughout the season. It's a tie game, seven apiece. Jim but Stanley says he's not sure whether whether it's David Greenwood that's the best athlete or Anthony Carter on his football team, as high as he is on Carter. It's nice to have to wonder. <laughs> it certainly is. Third down. Flicks are gone. Morano down the middle for Anderson off his hands at the 19-yard line. Would have been a first down, upended by Oliver Davis. But that would have been a first down had Greg been able to hang on to the football. Instead, it is fourth down. Well, you can see how costly penalties can be. You know, everybody's going to get them, but it's sort of like turnovers. It's when and where on the field it happens and where the ballers were threatening and in fairly deep after the holding call on Joe Lukens on the reverse back the Pittsburgh Maulers out of potential scoring territory. Little indecision by Penry's group on the sidelines. Field goal, 5-4, a field goal, or punted away, and finally the punt won out. Carter standing back on his own 10-yard line, and Larry Schweider, five-year veteran out of the University of Pittsburgh, the punter, on his own 46. They've run out of time, but that doesn't bother them a bit. That doesn't bother them a bit. Swider would like to have another five yards to work with to try to get it inside the 20, 15, or perhaps even the 10. Oh, so they just let the clock run down and to take that delay a game penalty. Ron Freeman, the up back, was the one delay that Delay of the game on the offense refused fourth down. Oh, they don't want them to do it. They let <laughs> it run down and then they refused it. <laughs> well, Freeman, uh, who is starting at linebacker tonight, for the Maulers playing that up back position. He's the one that calls the signals or any adjustments they're going to have to make. He felt that there might be a little bit of an overload, so he's calling those outside people in for a little more protection. Oh, he sent it almost over there to Slider, but he's going to get it away. And it may be a good one. Nope, it's going to go into the end zone and come out to the 20. So they don't pick up too much on that. Only 18 yards because it'll come back to the 20-yard line. Well, it was a good one by Swider just to see him go high in the air for that. I'll tell you what, it looked like a first baseman without a glove. One-handed grab. Dropped it quickly. Had a pretty good drop. Normally, you want to drop to the side. He was still trying to go to the corner with it. It's a tie ball game. First time. Ball is on the 20-yard line. 7 all. 6.02 to go in the first half. Pittsburgh scored first. Michigan tied it up. And Michigan's got the ball. 50% of the time, they've picked up five yards on first down. Bear throws it out for Carter, and Carter is on his fingertips. And Bill Yancey and David Langloy collided with Carter, and Anthony A.C. couldn't hang on to it. And Anthony getting up, uh, rubbing his back as he's going to go back to to Bear and say, ooh, don't, don't hang me out to dry like that. See him going up high, and you see from the corner there, he gets the shot from Yancey, catches a little sandwich job from the inside from Langloy, and he said, ooh, that smarts just a little bit. I awesome. bet you David Langloy was saying the same thing. He really <laughs> buckled after hitting him. By the way, when they put him on this side with Jerry Holmes, he'll take Anthony Carter one-on-one. -on -one. When he goes to the other side, they'll double-team him. It's second down and ten. the first down out near the 40-yard line. Well, that shows you what kind of an athlete that Carter is. He just took a lick on the previous play, and a lot of times receivers going inside, they're going to say, well, if he isn't going to catch the ball, we're going to punish him anyway, so we get him looking. But now Carter releasing a lot of room over there by Yancey. Runs the hook, little turn move to the inside. Yancey closing, getting a little bit of help from David Langloy, and then a little more help from one of the linebackers, so they thought that uh, maybe they were roughing Carter up a little bit. 
We thank the Silver Dome. We're thrilled to be here. It's cold outside. We're inside. No blizzard like last Monday, though. 20 yard pickup from the 40 yard line, first and 10, Michigan. And here's Terry Miller. Miller gets across the 40 to about the 44. Pickup of six. It'll be second down and six. You can see David Graham getting up, number 97, after the tackle. Once again, a pretty good block by the right guard, Ray Penny, as he was leading that play. Tony Osborne, the tackle to his right side, just outside Penny, pulling down the line. And usually against the 4-3 defense, which is what the Maulers are playing, you kind of got to account for that backside pursuit. But right now, the, the Panthers getting away with it. They're pulling everybody every chance they can. Less than four and a half minutes to go in this first half. it over for Mike Cobb and he can't hold on to it. Cobb had it and then didn't have it. By the way Don, when you saw the score in all the rain last week of 7-3 Oklahoma beat Pittsburgh some might have been caught and maybe I was guilty of saying well just a couple expansion ball clubs in the driving rainstorm. They don't have too much. Pittsburgh is playing the league champions very well here tonight. Champions of course look stronger and this afternoon Denver which buried Los Angeles a week ago had to go into overtime to beat Oklahoma. Well it's just no snap to go out and play these expansion ball clubs. No it really isn't and Joe Pendry feels that he has a, a, a good youthful club both ways offense and defense. They won two preseason games. They beat Jacksonville. They beat Washington. So he thinks he's got them on the way. Third down. Six to go. Was Broughton in motion. He's a wide receiver. And there's Broughton catching the ball. And he dropped it and it's picked up. Down the line goes Dan Short. Dan Short is going to score. Went in and out of the hands of Broughton. And Short picked it up. And the Maulers are on the field mauling their own men. <laughs> they, they got the right name. They are so happy for Dan Short as he returned it. The fortunes change in a very, very quickly as Bear drops back through the ball well. Got good protection, as you can see up front. No penetration, good field of vision. Lays it in there, and as it pops up in the air, Short, the man of the hour and on the spot, picks it up, and it's down the sideline. Nothing but a foot race, and the momentum right now is with the Pittsburgh Ballers. 54-yard return unofficially by Short. Good job. Ballers for the second time tonight lead. Good job of staying in bounds right down about the five-yard line, too. Tony Lee to add the extra point. What we're just talking about, don't take these expansion ball clubs for granted. And Lee is two for two in his debut. And short, the man of the hour. Right there as, as the ball bounces up, kind of comes off uh, Ron Freeman a little bit off of his shoulder, but short scooping it up. You'll see him down near the goal line. Good job of running right there and staying on, on the inside of that white marker. That's excellent balance. 4-0-2. Did so. Lead a kick off. It gets by Williams. Goes into the end zone. Remember, it's a free ball. He's got to cover it, and he does cover it at the end of the end zone. Well, come out to the 20-yard line. First and ten, with 3:53 to go in the half. Would you say things are bouncing right right now for the Pittsburgh Ballers? Well, they're bouncing right, and we're going to bounce out of here. We are back at the Silver Dome. First down from the 20-yard line. A bear hands to Ken Lacy. Lacy's got a first down to the 32-yard line. They'll mark it at the 33. David Langloy made the stop. And the crowd still buzzing about Dan Short, a veteran with Pittsburgh of the Cotton Bowl and the Sugar Bowl in his 54-yard return. Well, and he's put him out in front. You know, the last series, the Panthers came out throwing the football when really Stanley wanted to run. They had a little over six minutes to go, and they kept putting it in the air. Then it really wasn't a Bears fault on the interception as it was a deflection move, but... This time, he said, we're going to go back to that running game. We're not going to give a chance to get any further out in front or any more mistakes. They were able to sweep both wide to the right and left. They went left last time. Here goes Williams to the right. That's right through and picks up another five or six yards. Langroy tripped him up. Michigan trailing in this ball game by the score of 14 to 7. The ballers go for one touchdown, and the other one, of course, was short. Well, Michigan, first... since getting the ball on their own 30, had to punt it away, get failing to get a first down. Then they got on the 16 and marched all the way for a touchdown. And then on their own 20 through the interception, which resulted 
in a touchdown for the Marlins. Second down. When Ed goes Lacey, he is very close to the first down. And we're very close to the two minute warning. Well, Jim Stanley, again, going back to what what he likes to do best, the bread and butter of the running play, be it up the middle or wide, and picked up a couple of quick firsts with it. Now we may see him mix it up a little bit and put it back in the air as we get a timeout call for a measurement. As they come out to measure, a lot of people tuning in may be saying, what about Mike Rozier? What has he done? Well, he has had several runs of under 10 yards. He has been used as a decoy on a reverse, as you see that they did not make the first down. And quite frankly, since the first drive of the Maulers, Pittsburgh hasn't had the ball that much. That's why we haven't been mentioning Rozier. And good thinking on the part of Joe Pendry, not wanting to work Rozier and knowing that he's a kind of a marked guy, came out with that free wide receiver offense, giving them some different looks, keeping some of the heat off of Rozier. Third down and short. They'll give it to Williams. Williams has got the first down, and that'll bring us down to the two-minute warning. John Williams picks up the first down at the 45-yard line. Surprise, surprise at the Silver Dome here tonight on the Saturday night of the USFL on ESPN because Pittsburgh leads the cha league champions, Michigan, 14 to 7. First down, Michigan at their own 45. Two minutes to go in the half. They trail 14 to 7. Hey there. Time swings it out to Lacey. Lacey's going to pick up some yardage about eight yards and moves into Pittsburgh territory at the 48-yard line before Holly and Yancey put him down. Well, the Panthers don't use a lot of mixture in their offensive sets. They're fairly conventional. When they get those split backs like they had there with Lacey lined up over the offensive right tackle, Osmond, the halfback lined over the left tackle, Godfrey, they swung out of the backfield, but they were running a screen. And what's so important is for those outside receivers, the tight end to clear it out, let him get started. Carter right, Holloway left. Holmes right up on Holloway. <laughs> Just about a yard away. Hebert gets it to the other side. Cobb, and he's dragged down by Short. Cobb, that's a strange thing. Cobb has a touchdown tonight, and the man who tackled him also has a touchdown tonight. The defensive back Short. <laughs> that is a little bit different. You don't see that happen too often, but... You know, I don't think I know of too many quarterbacks that have had the poise at the young age that Bobby Bear does. I must have talked with him for an hour the other day at practice, and he just doesn't let anything bother him. And the fact that they're behind here to a club that they figure to beat, I think they were favored significantly. He isn't worried. He just sits back there and does his thing. He went back and finished up school in the fall. His teammates, former teammates, were playing football down in Northwest Louisiana State. Bobby's going to class. Got his degree. First down. The Carter and put out of bounds. And that time, Gary Holmes was right with Carter, and so was the official. Well, that's a matchup. You get Holmes, who was an excellent player for the New York Jets, before deciding to come over to the Maulers. And it was looking to be a classic matchup between the two of them. That's the first time we've seen that they could really get after it. Holmes a little guilty of shoving him around in there. Well, let us see whether or not they let the flag stand because it could be if the ball was uncatchable, they'll just let that go. No harm, no foul. They're coming back up this way. We'll wait for Wesley Ward to sort it out for us. Holmes, Holmes is an unusual corner. It is going to be holding, not interference. So that's quite a different thing. And that's Holmes. He was a leading defensive back for the Jets last year. On the defense, number 29. Oh, it's not even an automatic home. first down. It's short. They called it away. So it was play. away from the play. Now that's one that if the ball is not catchable, unless he about undresses him with a hold on his jersey, they are normally going to call. But Hebert, he, he really doesn't worry too much about those things. You know, he came in late. He wasn't really ready to go, but he was throwing down there as much as he could with... Uh, Mark Super Duper of Miami and Sidney Thornton, Oklahoma, Victor Otis, Baltimore Colts. Three wide receivers, Frank Mullane. McLean is in for the first time tonight. He's left Carter and Holloway now right. And Abair with 103 to go in the half. Puts it out there. Look out! And the 
ball is caught by Carter. Cut. Oh, they're going to mark it at the one. Set his knee, hit at the one. 23 yard pickup, first and goal to go with 56 seconds left of the half. AC, Anthony Carter. That's why Jim Stanley says, as far as he is concerned, he's the best receiver in football. Surprising he was not a first string all pro a year ago. He was named to the second unit. Carter coming off the line has a lot of room downfield. You got to respect that speed. Does a little weave to the inside so that he gets short, but the ball is a little bit behind him. He makes the adjustment. There was good pressure on Abair, who you couldn't see. He laid it to a spot, and Dan Short made the play. Abair now six of nine for 92 yards, and the ball. And there's the dive by Williams. He's going to be thrown for a loss. Time called: 28 seconds. Left in this first half. Maulers leads the league champion Panthers 14 to 7. First time out. A Bear taking a timeout. Wants to talk with Stanley. Bring a little motion across. Can't see the surge of the line because there isn't any. And as they try to go up over the top with John Williams, he can't get to it. And Huther and it looked like uh, McGibbon were the two that got in there to make the play along with a lot of help from some of the defensive line of the Pittsburgh Maulers. 28 seconds to go. Good crowd. Silver Dome. Second week of the USFL. Move it back to the two. Really the one. Now they've had success going outside. Williams is not going to have success here. And it's third down. Time called with 22 seconds left. And A Bear will come over to the sidelines again. 22 seconds left. Miller is the tailback now. He can go wide. Number 43. Williams is not in there. They give it to Miller to go wide, and Miller lost the football! And it belongs to the Maulers. What a turnover! A turnover for a touchdown by Short, and now a turnover when they're about to score a touchdown. Well, what a defensive stand. We just talked about the momentum lift factor in favor of the Maulers, leading at 14-7 to to stop them at the goal line. It's just a conventional pitch out in front of it is Jeff Whisker the guard and then he's got Ken Lacy there he takes it up to the inside but the ball gets jerked loose it's rolling around on the ground Freeman comes across to try and jump on it in a hurry and then short gets into the action. He almost tried to pick it up. Yes he almost did. Almost tried to now, pick it up. Make it would have been a fatal mistake. Yes it would have. You want to you want to drop in that ball. I'm sure they're going to going to probably just run a sneak or something to kill the clock here. But right now, the Michigan Panthers got to be talking to themselves a little bit. They make a nice drive and end up with no points. Turnovers have caused 14 points. Seven by the Maulers, seven the Panthers did not get. Morano keeps the football. Ten seconds. And they're still counting it off. You know, Michigan's not going to call a timeout to delay this. I guess they're a little down. The teams are leaving the field. Time has run out on the clock, but now they've called timeout. So what are they going to do? The officials have signaled timeout. The clock has run down to zero. The Michigan team, which called timeout, is walking off the field. So I guess forget the timeout. Good leg on Lee driving Williams back to the five-yard line, really the four-yard line. And John Williams comes across the 20, gets down the sideline, and is tackled from behind near midfield. And Michigan down by seven, have outstanding field position to start the second half on a 43-yard kickoff return by John Williams. Saving tackle by Ike Griffin. As he receives the ball back here, Williams gets a crack up that right sideline. The ball is not kicked down the middle. Good blocking up front to adjust to it. He picks his way through clean. Does an excellent job right there shaking off Larry Friday. Hey there. Gets it out and all by himself over there. Jerry Conway, first down at the 20-yard line. Bill Yancey was 10 to 12 yards away. 15-yard pickup. Was he ever open over there? Not a very big guy at 5'7", 165. It kind of gets overshadowed, obviously, by Carter. But the Michigan staff 
really think he is an excellent receiver. He ran down, did a little sideline move, didn't have to fake a whole lot, just sort of turned out. But his average a year ago was over 20 yards, so that tells you what kind of speed and what an effective receiver he is. Terry Miller is checked into the backfield. He's the man that fumbled down on the one-yard line at the end of the half. And he gets it away with just one second left on the clock. Goes it out here for Mike Cobb. Cobb, well out of bounds inside the foul. First and goal to go, Michigan. A 10-yard play, a 15-yard play, and then a 16-yard play. And you talk about poise, Jim Simpson. I want to say that you could hear Bobby Bear changing the call when he was in the middle of his cadence. He was on the second number as he backpedals. He changed that call because he felt Cobb could get open, bounced off the linebacker, went out into the flat, was wide open, and Bear laid it in. That is poise for a quarterback, believe me, when you can stop that cadence mid-count. Cobb caught the touchdown pass in the first half. didn't take very long. There's still 13.02 to go here in the, in the quarter. 54, the right guard pulling out Matt Braswell in place of Ray Penny. It's an influence block. He doesn't even have to touch anyone. It's so wide open. Cobb, the tight end, 88 on the right side, just buries his man. As you see him, stuff him right into the ground. That's Ron Freeman. 89 is Cobb, not 88, but what a block. Boy, did he stuff him. No over Jovic to try to tie the game up. The kick is up and the kick is good. And we've got a tie game for the second time tonight. It's 14 all. It took Michigan less than two minutes to tie it. It's up to Glenn Carano and company to hang on to the football and move it. They've not done that since the first drive of the game. Oh, there's Miller back at the 10. He's to the 20. Anything else is gravy. He's outside the 30. Miller gets out near the 40-yard line. And so Corrado and company will also have good field position with which to start. Good return after that ball bounced around as it did at that stage because a lot of times that gives the coverage team that much more time to get there. And as he was making that return, he picked up several nice blocks. Adjusted, came across, got some help from Potts, got some help from Martin. Good job up front to bring him there. 28-yard return, three wide receivers now for Glenn Carano. What has Mike Rozier done? Seven carries for 19 yards. He has scored the only offensive touchdown the ball has had. Carano, that time, loops it out here. As his man, that is Rozier. Rozier looking for some running room and picks up maybe seven yards out to the 45-yard line before Alan Hughes knocks him down. Number 98. Hard-earned yards, too, because Rozier is going to run a screen. He steps up, fakes like he's going to block, times it with the linemen that are coming out in front of him there. Gets uh, Lohman out in front, picks up a block, tries to cut back, but excellent pursuit by the defensive club of the Pittsburgh Panthers. I'll say one thing, though. Joe Pendry sticking with his same attack that he started the football game. Second down, three to go. First man through is easily. He's got the first down out to midfield. Walt Easley moves the ball out to midfield, and they'll move those stakes. Number 14 in your picture there is Tom Rosance, who spent five years in the CFL. He is the backup to Glenn Carano, who spent eight years with the Dallas Cowboys. Who's number 11? David Bostur, out on Holy Cross. Look at Pendry. <laughs> Pendry says, come on, get it in there. We don't want to waste time and get somebody out of there. Play clock shows 15 seconds, says both Martin and Rao come wide to the right. Anderson was the best pass receiver in the first half. Easily not going very far this time, a couple of yards, that's all. Robert Pennywell, number 59, and Paget 99, in on the stop. And you can see Borden also getting up. 
Well, Joe Pendry said he wanted to run the right side primarily. You see the two linebackers coming, Bentley and Pennywell, are filling the hole to that side with a lot of help from their teammates. But you see the fact that they sit back that five-yard distance gives them a chance to read it and then make their move from there. They read it quickly that time. They are in Michigan territory at the 49. Second down and nine to go. We've got a tie game. Ten and a half minutes, third quarter. Toronto gets the ball and up. Oh, he's still got it. What a catch. Now Kimchik bobbled that ball. Bobbled that ball. Was hit and went to the ground with it. Very close to a first down. They run the delay to Kimchik coming out late. Sits in there, blocks for a moment, releasing a cross. You can't see him. Good protection for Carano, but he comes shallow to the line of scrimmage, underneath the linebackers. Should have caught it clean, but as he bobbles it up in the air, he takes a shot from Corker, manages to stay on his feet, and get it to a third and extremely short. About a foot. Easily. The only back, they've got two tight ends. They're going to throw, and Carano may be thrown. can't believe it with a foot to go they tried to catch him and nobody picked up Padgett he's a down lineman not a linebacker blitzing and he did come absolutely clean as you described it Jim because he came inside Donnie Hickman the offensive tackle he almost gave him pneumonia he got there so fast but uh, a big play as far as the Michigan Panthers are concerned. Short made the big defensive play for Pittsburgh with a touchdown. That's a big defensive play for Michigan. Slider to kick. Broughton is the deep man along with Carter. Angling it toward the sidelines. It's going to hit inside the 10. They'll try to hold it from going in. They will. Down at about the one or two. A fine play there by number 21, Bill Yancey. So Michigan is in the hole, but they're tied here in the third quarter. Score the time remaining third quarter. They have spotted the ball at the four. You think Jim Stanley will throw back here? That is Miller, and he's cut down before he got to the line of scrimmage. Terry Miller hardly got off the mark before Bruce Huther, the ex-Dallas Cowboy, number 57, knocked him down. Good play by Huther as he filled that in a hurry. They took an inside move by those two defensive tackles that freeze Huther up. I think earlier in the game I called him Uther, but it is Huther. I tell you, we've also corrected because one of us said the Pittsburgh Panthers are the Pittsburgh Maulers. <laughs> and, of course, it's the Michigan Panthers. But how about this? There was a man in last night's game whose name is Martin Harvey. You know what you can do with that. <laughs> oh, sir. Talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, exactly. Second down, 10. Lacey gets to the five, and that is all. And Lavelle Short, number 92, made the stop. Well, you know, Jim Stanley has been known to take some chances, and Jim, you did that game a week ago when they were in field goal position at the end of that football game. I think they surprised most everyone, certainly the blitz when they threw to get the ball down to the three with about uh, four or five seconds in the game, and the... The, the coaches on the sideline or up in the press box, the Michigan coaches, they're they're trying to figure out how can we get out of this deep deep territory. Second time within a week they've been trying to figure that out. <laughs> Had problems with Chicago. Hey falls down after the handoff, and Miller is cut down. There are three plays. Clancy, one of the men in there. The other is David Graham and Huthers also in there, but three plays and they lost yardage. Well, give credit to the defense of the Pittsburgh Maulers as they kept them in there, and that's what they wanted to do when they they had to give them the ball back with the punt, downed it in good position, get them three and out, they'll get it in excellent position coming back offensively. Look at this, kick, it is Buck! They'll fall out for a touchdown! Michigan tried to get the ball away without having the Pittsburgh Marlins lined up. And even at that, it is a touchdown. We knew that. We just got to see who got it. Let's look in the end zone and see who got it. There's a lot of struggling going on for that football. You know underneath, it's the guy with the strongest arms, but the official signal touchdown, so that's what counts. The ball is dropped good, but the penetration is there. And one of the disadvantages can't pick up the number of who was the one that got through there first in order to make that play. 
it looked as though it was... Uh, Ira Albright. It was Albright. But you know one thing you can do, normally speaking, when you're punting from your end zone area, is you tighten up the line. And the Panthers, they were rushing it so much that they really didn't get a chance to get set, and it cost them. Looked like Walter Holman got the touchdown, but the big play was by Albright. But the big thing was that Michigan was trying to kick the ball away before Pittsburgh was ready, and they weren't together. Now watch this. If we look again. You can't tell from here, but Turns this is Greenwood. Over. And Greenwood, is, he adjusts pretty well, but Albright coming in from the right side, you know, that's two weeks in a row that... The Panthers have had one blocked. And you know that Greenwood was never had a kick blocked all last year. There have been three turnovers that have either prevented or gone against Pittsburgh and scored. That is Bobby Tuttrell who gives him a little bit of speed back there, but he gets out to the 35. But you just can't keep turning that ball over in such big, big mistakes like that, Don. Well, with the miscues, the interception turned into a touch. A fumble stopped the touchdown for Michigan at the halftime. The block punt resulted in a touchdown. And Ira Albright, the guy that recovered it for the touchdown, played for this Michigan Panther team just a year ago and was was picked up in the expansion draft. So you know he's got to be happy. You know, our replay didn't show up. But again, I must point out that Michigan lined up very quickly and was going to kick the ball before the Panthers special team was even on the field and in position. And maybe they were just too loose. As you said, you get down in tight. They thought they'd get away with it, but there was a gap, and Albright took it. From the 36-yard line, here's Lacey, their best performer tonight again, getting out to the 39, a gain of three, and that is all. And you can see Jim Clancy, Sam Clancy, just kind of hit him again. They're fired up, these ballers, who are just a game and a half old. Here and Lacey tonight. Look what Lacey's done. You can see that that Lacey has a significant gap in yardage there with the 68 yards. That time he didn't get a whole lot. Well played defensively. Ray Penny came out clean as the guard, but the defense just paralleled the play, and there was nowhere for Lacey to go. 21-14, third quarter, 5:43 to go. Long checkoff gives the ball to Miller. Miller runs right into a man in the backfield, Bill Yancey. Yancey was being taken out of there. He was down on the ground, and a flag is down on the ground downfield. Play well, was awfully fast developing. Looks like the penalty is going to be called against the Michigan Panthers. Bill Yancey really read that well, made a fine play to come up. You know, when the corner has to make a move on a sweep, which essentially that was off a different look. It was sort of a cross buck action. Then he has to recognize and squeeze the distance so that that back doesn't have any running room to the inside, yet can't outflank him to the outside. You know, one of the Michigan Blocking front offers were in here. Number one on the offense, decline. Carter's penalty, Third illegal there. block, is declined. One of the Michigan officials were in here, and we were kidding about last Monday night when they won with just a second. He said, well, well, we don't want to be that close tonight. We'll win with maybe a minute to go. Right now, he's probably hoping they win. <laughs> Everything has been going against the Panthers. 44,485 looking on tonight. Just double what you had a week ago, wasn't it? Uh, well, last Monday? Less than a week ago. Yeah, less than a week. <laughs> probably seems like a year ago to you. Third down and ten. That's Broughton in motion. He's a wide receiver. Hebert back. Going out here for Broughton. And Broughton is right down by Holmes. First down at midfield. Broughton ran a simple curl in against Jerry Holmes and got the Jets' ex-best defensive back at medium. And watch the quick release of Hebert right here. He sees him breaking to the post inside. He's got pressure in front of him. He snaps it off to the inside. And the best of them get beat. Jerry Holmes being a good one. But Broughton, a rookie out of Jackson State, breaks it off and picks up a big gain to midfield. First down, 21 to 14. Pittsburgh, Michigan's had the ball most of the time since the first quarter. We need five! We need five! Hunt! Hunt! 
Bear. Across the middle, Cobb again, the tight end. Yancey on the tackle. Cobb is having a good night. Caught a touchdown pass. You know, it's so important, the coordination between that quarterback and receiver to get that timing. Cobb coming out of there, taking an outside release, releasing outside of the, of the end, or the defensive uh, linebacker to his side. Wanted to go to the sideline in a little drag type of a move. Saw that the zone was there, just hooked up to the outside, found the open area, and Abair drilled her. Second down and three to go. That's Lacey, and he's going to get outside and get the first down inside the 35 yard line. Langloy made the stop. I said moments ago that Cobb is having a good night. He's caught five balls for a touchdown and a total of 56 yards. And a little different wrinkle as far as an offensive play by the Michigan Panthers. They were lined up with the strength facing to the left. They counterstepped it that way. Pulled Jeff Wiska, the left guard who came out, had drawn in all of the defensive line and linebackers of the of the Pittsburgh club and came around that corner clean. Broughton comes to the left, Carter to the right, Holloway's out of the ball game. Michigan continues to move the ball. But things happen to him. First down, Hebert gets the ball away, and whoa! There goes down Lacey. He was really leveled by Yancey and a flag down. And another guy down is Bobby Hebert at the moment, because I want to tell you, Pop, they drilled him from both sides, and he is a durable kid. He is hurt. Hey, Bear, slow in getting up, and I'm wondering what the flag is for. I didn't see anything after Lacey went out. He was bumped out of bounds. That I saw, but it had to be more than that to draw a penalty. Looked Maybe like he gave him a forearm. Hey, Bear, getting the snap here, looking upfield. He's going to come out to the right. He feels the pressure. You'll see it from both sides. There's the hit he takes, the old sandwich job, as he lays it out to the right side. <laughs> Yancey a little over aggressive. Well, I saw you Lacey know, fires a maybe a little bit of an elbow. He said hello, a couple of. Them. But he is all right. It is Hey Bear they're worried about. He was really shaken up as they mark off the penalty. Takes it down inside the 20 yard line. You know the ironic thing, Jim. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness on the defense. First down. In talking to Paul Martha, the old defensive back, I said, you know, when you fly around, you can make some things happen. Vince Lombardi, the president and general manager of the Pittsburgh, or the uh, Michigan Panthers, and glad to see that Abear is up. He said, you guys got to quit taking those cheap shots. Bear's neck all scratched up, but it's been between his eyes. He's been holding his head, saying, I'm all right, but they're all questioning him. And Whit Taylor has gone in to replace him. Give him a little uh, ammonia there to try and uh, bring him back a little quicker. Whit Taylor out of Vanderbilt. This is his second year. He replaced A Bear for other reasons last year when Bobby wanted to get the job done. A Bear came back. Here's Taylor. It's away from one man, but not another. And down he goes as they blitzed him on the first down. Getting him at the 25. A down lineman, Sam Clancy, actually made the tackle back at the 25. Clancy got the cleanup shot. Good reaction on his part. You know, he was an excellent basketball player. Had a tryout, third round choice of the Phoenix Suns. So that shows you the kind of athlete he is. And he really showed some acceleration. And Taylor is looking at all those plays on his wrist. They'll get a sign from the sideline, which is a number for a play. Then he'll look down there. He's still looking down, make sure he's got the right one. Now he'll call it second down. Jim, I guess you could say about that, you talk about guys uh, thinking quick on their feet. He was thinking quick off his feet as he kind of gets stepped on by Penny. The left foot of Penny tripped him up as he was setting back the pass block, but a very alert Whit Taylor jumping up quickly spots Carter in the middle and turns what could have been a three or four yard loss if he had stayed on the ground into a couple two and a half, three yard gain. 
Carter comes out, limping just a bit. McLean has come in, is to the right, Holloway to the left. Third down and eight to go. There's Taylor looking, throwing, and throwing behind Holloway. There's one of your no harm, no fouls. Holloway never could have caught the ball. It was behind him, so no fly. And Taylor very unhappy with him as he had Holloway going to the post. He read the blitz, went to the automatic. The safety was coming. There was a big void area in that position. And when he went to the quick post, Holloway, while he had plenty of running room, the ball was thrown high and behind him. Let us take nothing away from the Pittsburgh Maulers' defense. But yet another thing has happened to Pittsburgh. They get all the way down here, and they lose Bobby Bear when they're inside the 20-yard line. Bojovic will try a 33-yard field goal. From 33 yards out with a lot of legs. Bojovic takes it 21-17. Novo Bojovic. 1.29 to go. It's 21-17, Pittsburgh. Carter, as we said, he was limping when he came off. Looks like he's feeling around in the area of that left or right knee. Maybe just pulling up his socks. But there is William Miller deep. And this has been an odd game. Everything that can go wrong has gone wrong tonight for Michigan. And make no mistake, Pittsburgh has had a lot to do with some of them. And certainly their defense, a lot of it. Miller had a 28-yard return last time. Lost the 20 to about the 23 this time. Scoring drive, eight plays, 48 yards with Bojovic. Capping it off with a 33-yard field goal to make it 21-17. to 17. Pittsburgh, the Maulers, in the second game of existence against the team that started out losing four of their first five last year, came back to win their division and later on to win the championship. Anderson comes wide to the right. Martin is over here with him. Durano, it's been so long since he's in his offense. Here's Rozier. Rozier just gets back to the line of scrimmage in a yard or two more, and that is all. 27 yards last week, and Rozier is under the 27-yard mark at this moment with 48 seconds to go in the third quarter. And there's no rainstorm here, but again, remember what Don has pointed out. Joe Pendry said, this is an 18-game season. We're not going to give him the ball 35, 40 times a game. We're going to use him sparingly, work him into the offense. Rozier has gained 20 yards and eight carries so far. And Joe Pendry continues to stay with his attack. He hasn't panicked. He hasn't said, well, we're going to go upfield. He uses the three wides, and he still plays his game. That is Rao in motion. Morano hands off to his lone setback, and easily doesn't go anywhere. Alan Hughes helps pick him up. It's third down. Easily pretty good second effort in there. Didn't look like much as he was thrashing around, but... He kept pounding away as it winds down to the quarter. Third quarter is over. And surprisingly enough, the Maulers lead the Panthers 21 to 17. Morano <laughs> took the ball out and he wasn't looking. Good pressure there by Kyle Bolin, the linebacker on Morano. And they'll have to kick the ball away. A little scuffle going on on the sidelines, or near the sideline, but it looks like it's broken up. That's the second time in a row in third and short. Toronto went to the air, so Joe Penry, obviously respecting that defensive club of the Panthers, uh, doesn't think he can run for those short yardage situations. In the meantime, Bobby Hebert has been warming up on the sidelines, throwing with Mike Ray, so it looks like he will probably come back. Mike Ray, the 10-year veteran that they acquired. Here's Anthony Carter. What a punt returner he is. He can turn the game around in just one play. Swider standing inside his 10 to kick the ball to Carter. He's at the 45 of Michigan. Good kick. Drives Carter way back high in the air. Good hang time at the 30-yard line. Carter, not quite. Fumble to football! But Michigan gets it. Almost another devastating turnover for the Panthers. Getting up. Number 28. 
Bear back in there, handing off to Terry Miller, who gets up to the 29-yard line. Second down to nine. Sam Clancy is playing a good game tonight, and he made the tackle, number 77. He tried the NBA once, as Don told you. He's a leading rebounder at the University of Pittsburgh, where he played basketball. <laughs> Set a record, school record there. Good quickness. Kenny was trying to trap him from right to left, but didn't get him. Second down from a 30-yard line. Carter to the left, Holloway to the right. Miller and Lacey the setback. Here's Bear looking for Carter across the middle. He's got him, and Carter kept the first down. AC gets across the 40-yard line. And it's first down, Michigan trailing 21-17, 13 minutes left on the clock. Good variation of the offense of Jim Stanley because that time Carter coming shallow down the line of scrimmage. And believe me, coming underneath like that, those linebackers there, the tendency is to want to take a little peek. You know you're going to get drilled, and, and Heather was sitting right there to give a little shot just after he got it. Stay there. Going it out here for Carter. Carter drops the football. Knocked out of bounds at the 35. The man with him is Dan Short. Excellent play by Dan Short, too. Carter felt he was roughed a little bit, and a fine throw by Bobby Abear. He was under pressure. Carter getting a release, starts outside, breaks underneath the Bill Yancey, starts inside to freeze short at the safety, and then takes it out. But Short, right with him, manages to strip the ball. He actually didn't get a hand in because the ball was dropped in. You could not see the fact that Bear throwing pretty much flat-footed as he was getting some pressure, all arm, drilled it in nicely. And Short, the only thing he could do was grab the arm, strip it loose, and it worked. I just keep thinking, Don, of next Sunday when they've sold out Three Rivers Stadium, when Pittsburgh plays its first home game with Mike Rogier, still looking for a big game in his young career. And, of course, the other team is Birmingham coming to town, and Birmingham has somebody by the name of Joe Cribbs running for them. And they've got a good one there, and Ken De Dombrowski, the defensive tackle, was hurt in the last play. He went to the sideline of the Maulers. Second down and 10 from the 40-and-a-half-yard line. One setback. Hey there. Looking across the middle, and Cobb has a six catch. If you hear him booing in the background, what happened on that is Cobb came over the middle to get the catch, and Carter in motion. You might pick up, here's Carter number one, here's Cobb 89, Carter underneath number one. Cobb's making the catch, but watch Carter to the right. You'll see him come flying back after the catch. Well, it doesn't, there he comes. Now he's into the picture as Mike McKibben just really took a shot, and the crowd was booing. McKibben for that. Third down and short, about two yards to go. Michigan trailing by four. Dumping it off here and pass. Intended receiver Ken Lacey coming out of the backfield. It is fourth down. With 11 and a half minutes to go. Greenwood is coming on the field and will pump the ball away. Well, another good job by the defense of the Pittsburgh Maulers, you know that old theory of bend but not break. Well, they haven't broken yet here tonight. Remember, Dan Short returned an interception for 54 yards for one Pittsburgh score. Miller scored at, uh, fumbled at the goal line for yet another possible score. And then there was a block pump for a touchdown for Pittsburgh. Greenwood sails this. Reggie Butts is the man with the ball this time. Butts finds a little opening and gets out across the 20 to about the 23 or 4 yard line. And it's first down there. 11.27 to go. Pittsburgh. First down. Morano. Stepping out of the pocket gets his man. That is Rogier, And Mike has got nowhere to go but picks up 5 yards to the 29 yard line. Bentley and Morland made the tackle of two linebackers. Good adjustment by Carano. He went with the play action fake off the right side. Wanted to go up the right side of the field. Had nothing there. Was cut off. Started to move to his left to run. The faking back that 
was Rozier was the one that came open over the middle and he turned a nothing into a approximately a five and a half maybe a six yard gain. Martin and Anderson both come wide to the left. Both backs are in there easily. The up back, Rozier, the tailback. This is Rozier. He's got 20 yards on the night. He's going to get a lot more here. He picks up 7, 8, 9, and a flag down, and he may have to have that just erased from the books. Looks like a holding call. Carano's already walking back inside the 20. So erase that from Mike Rozier. Take away the first down, and they'll step it off. And stops the clock as well, and you have to give Joe Pendry, the head coach, the Maulers a lot of credit because he came out on that first down he isn't sitting on it a lot of coaches might get a little conservative would try and run that football a little bit he didn't he said well we got to gamble we got to take all the chances we can he threw it on first down that time would have had a, a first down on the second down situation unfortunately the holding penalty is going to back holding, him up number 70 on the offense still that second down the right tackle Jim Stanley, I don't blame you. Tough time to win it last week and a tough time to win it if you do win it this week. And the ballers, they want to move that football. In the event they do have to punt it, they would at least like to kick it to the other end of the field and make the Panthers have to go as much distance as they possibly can. Second down, 15, a grim three wide receivers. Monday hurt in there now and the nine-year veteran of Eastern Michigan makes the sack. They call him Mr. Panther. He hurt his knee on a sprinkler. Kind of a freak deal. He reaches up with his hand. You'll see him get Carano here. That's some strong arms. They said he came back in better shape than he had ever been. He was thinking of retiring. He didn't like it. He's the oldest player on the squad. <laughs> 32. Didn't show it right there, did he? Huh? Showed some arm That's strength. the third sack tonight. By Michigan, Pittsburgh's got one. But a big play here, third down and 19 to go. Morano puts it out here for Anderson. Anderson, no foul, no harm. Good job, Oliver Davis. Forked out, they'll kick it away. Good recovery by Oliver Davis because he was beaten by Anderson early. And the funny thing of that is that Jim Stanley said, it, there he is right there. You can't see him get beat, but the ball, you know, lost, kind of lost it up in the lights, but a good recovery by Davis because he was beat by five yards. Stanley said everybody seems to go deep on Chapman, not on Davis, but they worked on Davis tonight. There's Anthony Carter along with Broughton standing at the 40. Swider, the punter is at his own goal line. Michigan down, time running down, 9.45 to go. The rush is not on. Swider takes a lot of time and gets his worst kick of the night away. Bounces back the other way. They'll have it inside the 40-yard line. Swider, when he needed the big kick, came up with his worst kick. 23-yard net punt. Nine and a half minutes to go in the game. Michigan with the ball trading 24-17, but a big opportunity here. First down. At the 35, after the 23-yard kick by Swider. Hebert puts it up. Holloway almost made the catch, and the flag is down. And there's the second time tonight that Jerry Holmes has been involved. Remember, we thought he was called the other time, but it was a foul away from the ball. This time, there's no mistake about it because Holmes was the only man there. And now we have a man down hurt. It looks like Dombrowski is hurting for Pittsburgh. He got hurt a little bit earlier, has come back. Now it looks like he's hurt again. Don, here's something, and we cannot, and it's that left ankle. You can see that Ken is really upset and hurt, but here's one thing. The colleges are putting it at two. I like this. 15 yards, automatic first down, instead of as in the NFL still has it, where you've got to mark it down inside the five-yard line. The 47 yes, you know on what, the defense, you know what, that's an automatic first down. You know what Bobby Hebert did there? He saw both corners up crowding, Holloway and Carter. There's the replay at the tail end with, with uh, <laughs> a little bit of crowding over there by Jerry Holmes. Holloway making a pretty good adjustment. But Hebert just threw the ball up. 
put it into a foot race, tried to let him run under it. And you'll see clubs do that. They'll put a lot of guts when they were in good field position to begin with. Ball is on the 20 yard line. First down. Hey, Bear on a handoff and still going for a touchdown to Miller. Whisker coming across, kind of a short trap type action. Excellent running by Terry Miller pulling, pouring through there, but he got that little bit of daylight to begin with, got through there so quickly that nobody really quite knew where he was until he was close to that goal line, and then he smelled it and kept pumping those legs. Long time since Terry Miller scored a touchdown on the pros. Bojovic comes in at the extra point. 9.21 to go. And Terry Miller it was with Denver last year. 55, Radloff blocking back. Good trap there on 77, Sam Clancy, to get it started. Picks his way to the right nicely as he saw it. And then with that second effort, just kind of runs over Dan Short, who had had a good night so far this Believe evening. it or not, this is the first time that Michigan has led all night long. One week from tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern time, Don and I will be down in Tampa Bay. The undefeated Bandits... They knocked off Arizona last night against Jacksonville, which tomorrow must play New Jersey. And then the following Monday, the team that Jacksonville beat has since fired its coach, the Washington Federals. They move on into Arizona against George Allen. And Paul and I will be there a week from Monday. Here's Boyovich kicking off. Miller, the deep man. And it's not taken by him, but it's taken by Langloy. And Langloy's in a lot of trouble and may have gotten it out to the 20-yard line. Now for the first time, starting from their own 20-yard line, the Pittsburgh Maulers find themselves behind. And I'll tell you, people at home don't think enthusiasm does something. This, this crowd has become electric. It has carried over to this Panther football team and has worked both ways. They've excited each other. The scoring drive, you see, 13 seconds. Miller on a 35-yard burst up the middle off of a quick trap, and the Michigan Panthers have gone ahead 24 to 21. It is now a case of the Maulers trying to generate some offense, Jim. See that number in the screen there, 20? That's how long Miller's touchdown run was. The drive started at the 35 after the four kicks. Excuse me, yes, I did running. say 35 remember, yards. Remember the penalty, 20. the 15 yards? Exactly, exactly. Okay. That's why it surprised me a little when Bear threw on first down. I know he automatic to it. Instead of sticking with the run call that was most likely on, tried to lay it up, got the pass interference call, and then they turned around and blew it up the middle for six points. Langloy, who returned the punt, it was the one who was shaken up. Now Carano will try to get something going here. They're within a field goal of a tie, and they've got a lot of time left, 8.50 to go. But they have not been able to move the football lately. Here's Carano with a fake and a throw, and there's a good catch by Ricky Martin, despite the fact he was covered well by Clarence Chapman. First down across the 30-yard line. They'll mark it at the 33. That was a good catch and an excellent throw, as you described, because Clarence Chapman just drove on that ball extremely well, was right there, but Martin put it away, and it was really in the spot where he could get it. Had it been an area where he had to reach for it, it was more into the number, so he could use his body to kind of screen Chapman just a little bit. The only thing that hasn't happened to the Panthers tonight is Mike Rozier. He is in the ball game now. Rozier with the football. Nowhere to go at all. Pick a number. They're all over there. Pennywell, Borland, Porker. Well, you talk about pursuit. They were all over there. They just went down that line of scrimmage and, of course, had the sidelines as an extra tackler. Rozier having nowhere to go, and they just shoved him on out with a little extra effort for no gain. Make no mistake about it. The turnovers in this ball game have had Pittsburgh leading most of the way. The interception for a touchdown 
Terry Miller just scored on a 20-yard touchdown run. Remember, dropped the ball at the Pittsburgh goal line. Then the block kicked for a Pittsburgh touchdown. But now Michigan is in gear. And the Maldives are trying to get back in the gear. Oh, good coverage there by Corker. Anderson did not catch the ball. Let me tell you what happened. There was single coverage on Greg Anderson. Corker immediately dropped off. Carano had to stop his throw and wait for Anderson to curl back. By that time, he was deep in coverage and he threw the ball away. Anderson, as you can see, Oliver Davis backing off of him right there, was up on the line of scrimmage, and I'm sure Carano had gone to the quick post. Corker, 57, coming out underneath it, forces Anderson to go around it. The timing really wasn't there as Carano kind of hesitating, false pumped once or twice, and then kind of throwing flat-footed, couldn't really drill it in, and it was incomplete. I think he hesitated because Corker peeled back in a heck of a hurry. Well, he'll get your attention. Oh. Third down and ten. Carano with the blitz on. Corker gets the ball away and caught or not. Look at that. Hawks wants interference call. Chapman is there. Osborne is there and they'll have to kick the ball away. And Broughton and Carter go deep. The momentum has swung to the Michigan side of the field, no question. Very important in that series that, that Pittsburgh pick up a first down to kind of slow that momentum down because this crowd has kind of cranked up this ball club and the ball club realizing it, smelling victory, has got that momentum going for them. Slider with just a 23-yard punt last time gets a good one away this time. Carter, they're catching it inside the 20, back at the 16-yard line. 7.39 to go, a 52-yard punt. And it's 24-21, the Panthers, and they've got the football. Well, there's certainly plenty of time in this football game for the Panthers, not only to add to their points, but, but for the Maulers to do a little something offensively. New Jersey at Jacksonville tomorrow. Brian Seid will not play for New Jersey. Arthroscopic surgery, but he'll be back in a couple of weeks, they say. Birmingham a loser, Los Angeles a loser in week one. They go at each other. Chicago, which gave everybody a good chance uh, last week before losing on the last tick of the clock to Michigan at Memphis, New Orleans at Oakland, and Philadelphia at Washington. And Monday night, Paul and I'll be down Houston at San Antonio. First down, 16-yard line. There's Miller, the touchdown runner, getting... To the 20-yard line. The clock continuing to run before they put another play up. It'll be below the seven-minute mark. Well, obviously, Pittsburgh would like to get Michigan three and out right here. Four yards. Pretty good uh, gain in a first-down situation. The defensive club of the Maulers has tightened up their line at the moment, figuring that the Panthers are, are going to go a little bit conservative, although you can never tell with Jim Stanley, but they, they were backed up approximately the 16-yard line, so they're playing them for the run right now. Don't you think Terry Miller feels a little better? Dropping the ball at the one-foot line in the first half and then going a, giving him a go-ahead touchdown on a 20-yard run here in the fourth quarter. Miller gets up the ball. It's going to be picked up by Yancey. Another turnover. Excellent field position. Yancey steps out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. I was just talking about the fact that he felt better about the 20-yard touchdown run after dropping the ball on the goal line. And then Miller drops it again. Yancey picks it up. They're already within field goal range for a tie with 6.20 to go. Well, they just come off the right side. A little cross-blocking from the right there with Penny kicking out. Had a nice hole. No reason to drop it. He just really didn't put the ball away. Yancey played the hop. Got the good Sunday hop to turn it upfield. He didn't realize quite where he was in the, in the area because he did not have to step out of bounds. Would have got a little bit more. Right here, as, as he comes through, he didn't have it tucked away. He kind of picked it up with his knee and caught it there as he was kind of juggling the football, but that's something that quarterbacks got to look at right into that running back stomach, right at those belt numbers. Two tight ends, one wide receiver. That's Ricky Martin to the right. They don't want to make a mistake. They can come out of this leap with a tie. Rozier gets down to the 16-yard line, a gain of three. And it's second down and seven. Rozier is fighting life in the pros at adjustment time. And also, his offensive line, and they're missing some people tonight, 
Doesn't measure up with the overpowering offensive line in the collegiate ranks he had in Nebraska. It certainly doesn't. Those yards are coming very, very hard here this evening, as they did a week ago. 7-3, to three, they lost to Oklahoma in game one. They're down by three here, but they've got an excellent chance with five and a half minutes to go. Second down, seven to go. The ball at the 16. Double coverage on the outside. They call time. Carano saw that double coverage. Both corners up tight. The two safeties were showing they were going to back it up. He didn't like his call, so he said timeout. I'm out. 5.20 to go. Carano goes to the sideline. Jim Simpson, Don Heinrich with the Silver Dome live on ESPN Saturday night, USFL football. The ball's at the 16, second down, seven to go for the Pittsburgh Ballers expansion team. They're down by three. Yet another turnover has given them a chance to at least tie this game. Same defense, double coverage. Rozier cuts inside. And gets inside the 15-yard line. And it'll be third down and four or five to go. But they up, and Edwards stopped it. Good pursuit once again by the Panther defensive club. You would have thought possibly Carano getting the same look defensively where he had that double coverage, the corners up, the safety's back. He might want to gamble, go down the middle to conceivably his tight end, but he didn't. Don, let's see how they play this. Keep it right in the middle to go for a tie. On third down, go ahead and just put the ball up and possibly have a turnover. Well, I would think that they'd have to put the ball in the air. They have not really been very effective running that ball this evening. They've been much more effective uh, trying to nickel diamond. Gotta run it. And Holman, who recovered the ball for a touchdown, just gets it down shy of the first down mark. They did not put it in the air. Went with the draw. And they're going to try for a tie. But if they do get the tie, they'll still be about three and a half minutes from Michigan, which can move the football if they would stop stopping themselves to come on down and win. Do you think Novo Bojovic might have another <laughs> shot? Maybe the man of the hour two weeks in a row. Well, this is the number one offense in the USFL a year ago, the Panthers. And, you know, they, they, they have no qualms about putting that football in the air. They got great confidence. Tony Lee's going to try his first field goal ever in pro ball from 28 yards out. It's up, and he has tied the score. Tony Lee, in his first pro game, ties the score at 24 all with 344 to go. And Joe Pendry's group has come back. But again, it was yet another turnover, the fourth devastating turnover for Michigan. Every one of them, three of them have resulted in scores, and one of them stopped them from scoring when they had the ball at the one-foot line. And normally speaking, if you have four or five turnovers in a football game, you aren't going to win. So right now, you, you'd almost have to say that the Panthers are fortunate to be tied. That uh, were it not for the Panthers' ineffectiveness offensively, they could be in, you know, deep trouble, significantly behind. But as it is, it's 24-all, 344, they're going to get the football. Our reminder, the Wisconsin and Michigan State coming up once this ball game is over. Basketball here on ESPN. We've got 344 to go. Broughton is the man deep. Along with John Williams. Now they put Bobby Futrell back there again. He was back there, remember, moments ago. He and Broughton both have speed. They're both rookie wide receivers. When you talk about a chess game, one of the major defenses of the of the Pittsburgh club is to use five defensive backs and two linebackers. We have not seen it this evening, but late in the game here, good possibility we will. Good possibility we could have an overtime. High kick. Broughton at the 15. Remember, he's got speed. Runs right into a man. That was a great play by number 67, Ira Albright, who earlier blocked a punt that Holman got for a touchdown. And he played with them last year, remember, in most of their games. Ira Albright played with the Michigan Panthers. You think he's got Look something to prove the way he flew, come flying down that field? There's the miscues and results of him. A touchdown. Then it went to the half that saved the touch. Then another touchdown. And then a field goal the last time around. So three out of four times they scored, and they saved points on the fourth one. It's 24-24, and on the miscues is a 24-point differential. 17 the Pittsburgh got, 7 Michigan didn't get. Now starting from the 20 with 3.22 to go. 
Michigan in a tie game. Hebert puts it out here for Holloway, and Holloway can't get to it. Second down. And boy, he had Holloway there. He was open. Just Look at Hebert. He knows it. Oh, just a, an errant throw. David Langloy out of Los Gatos High School out in the coast was a walk-on at USC and has managed to not only had made that USC club uh, and be a starter, but he has made it here in the USFL and played well. Say what you will, Don, but Mike Cobb is the big man on reception tonight. Anthony Carter with a 16-yard touchdown catch last week. Holloway with a 49-yard touchdown catch. Have not been heard from too much yet. Second down, 10. Hey, there wants it to hurry. Dumps it out in Lacey. Gets a block on Yancey, but Lacey doesn't go too far as coming over is number 56, Ron Freeman, the linebacker. And again, there's a little scuffle. Tell you what, <laughs> there's been no love lost between these two. Yancey, I think, wants the ball. <laughs> Would you say emotions are running a little high down there, Jim? <laughs> it is going to be third down and seven to go. Well, you know, Lacey would have gotten more yardage out of that. Really, it was a screen out to the right side. He got Ray Penny and Tom Osborne, the right guard, right tackle, that got out in front of it. And the Mauler defense had gone into a double coverage. So Lacey had slipped inside of the first one, but by virtue of the ball being high, he had to adjust to the catch. He really couldn't get underway quick enough. Here's your play of the game. If we are to avoid an overtime or to give Pittsburgh a chance to win it, it is third down and seven. They would certainly have to kick it away unless they get a lot of yardage here. Hebert gets it out here and has Holloway. First down and Langlois takes him down. Across the 35. Big play. And they did it. It was a big play. And with 2.16 left, Jim, Remember, after they get to that two-minute situation, that the Panthers will not have to necessarily use all their timeouts. They'll gain a little advantage because they will stop the clock in that last two minutes on a first down to move those chains, and it'll give them a little bit of a chance, and it will not start till the official winds his arm. Also, Holloway ran out of bounds, stopping the clock at yes. 16, and yes. the clock will stop at the two-minute mark. Smart play. They were went with three wide receivers. Now they're back to their conventional tight end and two wides. First down from the 37. Hey, there. It's it out here. Nobody's going to get this. Again, Abair threw it where nobody was. Well, I think he was anticipating that Holloway was going to going to run that zig corner type of a move or turn out as he was weaving downfield. He had plenty of room, but the pressure by Holly was in Abair's face. He really couldn't set and throw the ball, and there's a perfect example of a hurry by a defensive line. But you also, your quarterback, you also saw Abair walk up to the line of scrimmage as Holloway was coming back to say something to him. Well, you know, <laughs> Abair did come in late. They don't have that timing down. He credits Joe Ferguson of Buffalo with a lot of help teaching to read defenses. Didn't read that one good. Second down, 10. in motion. Hebert gets it out here to start the corner. The corner inside the 20. Down to the 15 and a flag down after he goes out of bounds. Looked like extracurricular as they kind of popped Carter in the head as he was going out. But what a nice play. 58 yarder. And, and the biggest thing is they can at least go ahead with a Boyovich field goal if they don't get a touchdown. Well, Abair missed the first one, but it was essentially the same pattern. That time he had room to throw it, lay it to the outside. You get Carter at the tail end. He had weaved to the inside and had all, all kinds of room on the ISO where you'll see him weave to the inside. Smart because it gives him sideline area to work with. And he left the defensive back, took him out of his shoes. And a well-thrown ball by Hebert and a big, big play. 48 yards on the catch, and now listen to what listen Rusty Ward said. Unnecessary roughness on the defense. First down. Half the distance to the goal line. The ball's at the seven and a half. First and goal to go. Two minutes and four seconds left. God, are these fans pumped up. Michigan needed it. They got the ball, and they moved almost the length of the field already in less 
than one minute. Well, that's why Jim Stanley says that AC is a big play guy. That he just over and over again comes through in the clutch form. Number seven, Lacey. Lots of running room on the outside. Cuts inside home. Touchdown. Flag down. Hold everything. Stepped right inside the good back Jerry Holmes. Lacey left Holmes just grabbing for air. Several of the Michigan players showing their disgust, so obviously it is going to be against them. You know, you have a situation now too, Jim. You almost don't want to score too quick. You want to you want to take a little time, but you certainly don't want to get backed up like this, and you do not want to lose a touchdown as A Bear comes over to talk to Jim Stanley. And you can see a man down injured for Pittsburgh once they sort this out and step off the penalty the two minute mark is here and so there will be timeout but right now we've got an injured man Michigan has moved back and the two minute warning is here so we'll go away and come back and see what's going to happen the one minute and 58 seconds left remain Middle linebacker Bruce Huther was the man who limped off the field. The ball is at the 13 after a holding penalty against the Panthers. And they've got it first down and goal to go from the 13-yard line. 158 on the clock. And I haven't seen any fans that are heading for the exits. It looks totally the same as it did when we asked the crowd that is getting their money's worth. A lot of entertainment. Big plays both ways. I'll tell you what. They're behind their football team. 44,485 here. There's the blitz on, but straight up the middle for a few yards goes Lacey. Down near the six or seven yard line. Hey Bear will wind down, Don, and that's what they want, as you pointed out. Yes, and Abear trying to quiet the crowd a little bit just before that player in the, in the process of his signals. Lacey unhappy as he split that thing with that blitz. A lot of times, they're gambling on defense. Bojovic warming up over there, popping it into the net a few times. But a lot of times, when you blitz like that, if you can split it, you got running room. And had Lacey not tripped up, he'd have gone all the way to the end zone. Lacey has 85 yards. Rozier does not have anything like 85 yards. At last look, Mike had about 20. Again, they'll go up the middle, staying right in front of those goalposts. Let that run down. You're wondering if Pittsburgh is going to call a time out here. And now who's hurt? Lacey. Looks like he hurt his arm just a little Lacey bit. Lacey is hurting badly. MVP last week. Outstanding night tonight. And he is hurting, holding that left wrist. That would be a big blow. Behind him is Cleo Miller, a 10-year veteran. But Lacey does it all, catches the ball, runs, sweeps, and goes up the middle with power. And came into this ball game a little bit injured. But that was to the lower extremities of the ankle and knee. And Novo loosening up over there again as he's... You know, I have often say that when Martina Navratilova came to the United States. Nobody can pronounce the name. They all call it Martina. Last year, there was a big debate. Is it Bojovic, Bojovic, or what is it? Bojovic? It's Bojovic, we've been told. And if he does it again tonight, everybody will know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> they certainly will. Monday night, he's going to do it again tonight, perhaps. Well, we were sitting in Mike Keller's office last year trying to determine how to pronounce it. He said, well, let's find out. We'll just call him at home and see how he says it. I still can't get over it. Doesn't everybody carry garlic and the glove there? Well, the other side, too, of that, Jim, is that you can call him anything you want if he kicks it through there. They don't care. Jim Stanley says, just get me three. Well, at stake is the game, but right now at stake is the immediate future of Ken Lacey and the Panthers and their offensive backfield. Let us hope that that is just a severe blow he took instead of something broken in there. No question. As the third leading rusher a year ago and two consecutive good weeks that he's rolled up a lot of yards, it would be a major blow to their offense. Hebert over getting uh, some last few pearls of wisdom as to whether or not they want to keep it on the ground in front of that goal post 
or possibly move it to the right side, figuring that Bajovic, we will go sidewinders tend to, to hook the ball a little bit, would have a maybe a little better angle. Excuse me, Don. We will try to get, if we can, what they believe that injury to be. I'm sure that x-rays are in order before anybody will actually know what it is. But we'll try to get it before we leave. But we've only got a minute of playing time left. And as sweet as this victory, if it is to be a victory, we're tied at 24-all, is to be for the Panthers. It'll make it bittersweet if Lacey is really badly hurt. Ball is at the six-yard line. It is third down and goal to go. Cleo Miller has taken over. Terry Miller, no relation, in the backfield with him. You would assume they'd run again. Carter, the only wide receiver, he's wide to the right. Terry Miller carries the ball down near the goal line. And it'll be fourth down. And you know what? Not one second went off the clock. Something has gone wrong. It was a minute to go. It is still a minute to go. Now they've begun. They took two seconds off the clock. And Abear was immediately pointing at the clock and has run over to the sidelines. He was well aware of no time having taken off of that clock. Terry Miller ran the ball, was tackled, and they didn't take a second off the clock. Now they've run it down to 43 seconds and stopped it right there. Now that man is on there again, Novo Bojovic. One for one tonight. The timeout for Pittsburgh, their third timeout. Bojovic has already kicked a 33-yard field goal. This will be much shorter than that and much less dramatic because it was on the last tick of the clock last week that he kicked the Panthers from behind to beat the Blitz. Now he's got 43 ticks on the clock. Jim, you ever notice that when the kicker's in there and it's a crucial situation, sometimes maybe not crucial, when they make it, everybody jumps on them, they're heroes. When they don't, nobody talks to them. They walk off by themselves, they're all scowling at them. They go down you at the end of the bench and try and hide. We are listening while you're talking, Don, to Wesley Ward saying, take eight seconds off that clock, run it down to 35. And that hurts the Maulers. And the Maulers, having used that third time out, have got an awful lot of ground to cover in a hurry, assuming that Bojovic pops this through. He's only going to have about a 19-yard field goal. And Jim Stanley is probably thinking, I'm glad I got Bojovic, but must I go through this every game? This is twice within a week. Well, it's almost like an extra point. It's sitting slightly inside the hash mark. And each time, Don, when it's come to this, they've been favored by much more than a touchdown to beat the opposition. Well, they were heavy favorites this evening, but they've had all they can handle through this football game, and it's coming right to the wire. If Bojovic should miss this 19-yard try with Taylor to hold, we're staring at a likely overtime. If not, we're trying to get a comeback from the Maulers. 19 yards out. It is perfect. Novo does it again. <laughs> and look at him spring around and jump in the air. I would say he's demonstrative. <laughs> he shows his emotion. <laughs> Novo Bojovic was doing the same thing last Monday night, but they're still a little bit better than a half a minute left on the clock. No timeouts to work with. Bojovic to kick off. That ball is going to go out of bounds, so they'll move it back to the 30. And he'll kick again. And Novo very unhappy with himself for hooking it out of bounds. Illegal procedure. <laughs> Slapping himself on the head. Remember USFL Monday night here on ESPN. That will be Houston at San Antonio. Don and I come back next Saturday night. Jacksonville at Tampa Bay. And then a week from Monday, the Federals are out for George Allen's Arizona Wranglers. That's the immediate schedule. And Tom Meese has inside the USFL this week, too. You know, you almost can't fall Novo for that kick because their scheme on kickoffs, rather than kicking it down the middle and making it easier for the blockers to distinguish or to set up a return, Stanley's philosophy is to go from one side or the other to kick it away so that the blockers bringing the ball back are going to have to adjust. For example, in this instance, the ball was into the right corner, offensively speaking, for 
for the Maulers. If they happen to have had a left return on, that means they'd have to come all the way across the field. But unfortunately, it took that little bounce to the outside, went out of bounds. Joe Penry will take his group home for their first home game next Sunday against Birmingham, sell out at Three River Stadium. Michigan goes on the road for the first time. Picked up by Holman. Out to the 30-yard line. That is Miller after all. Excuse me, William Miller. 26 seconds to go, no timeout for me. Toronto's gonna almost have to call two or three plays in the huddle here, regardless of what happens, whether he has a completed pass or be it incomplete. And the biggest point is they've got to go 70 yards. That, that, that is a bit of an obstacle. <laughs> That's what he's thinking. It looks like 170 right now. It's a long way to that other but end. Then again, one big play could have Tony Lee on the field and an effort to try to tie. Well, the Panthers felt that they really don't have the great speed outside like they'd like. Gets out, puts it out here, and overthrows Anderson. And it's 20 seconds left. You know, there's a perfect example between Carano and Anderson. Anderson went downfield despite Carano getting chased out of the pocket, flushed to his left. Anderson did the right thing. He came downfield. He was wide open over there. Carano spotted him. But Anderson started working back towards the football. Gave up about five yards, would have been able to get out of bounds, but Ferrano, not anticipating it, sailed it high over his head. I'm called by Wesley Ward, the referee, to come over to the sidelines. And whatever, oh, hi, Novo. Hi, hi, thank you, Jeff, Terry. How you guys doing, thank you. A lot of snow over there, huh? 20 seconds to go. I think what happened, a cart was on the field near the end zone. And even though they're not going that way, it was close enough that should be an interception or something, and they went back the other way. Someone could have gotten hurt. So they had the cart taken off the field. The Panthers using a very loose zone prevent type of a defense. They've really given a lot of slack. Second down. 4-21, Michigan. Toronto winds up for a big one, and that is Cox over there. And the market at midfield with 13 seconds left. Chapman put him down. One more big pass, and Lee could have a shot, but remember, they have to go out of bounds because they can't call time to get a man on the field. Toronto puts it up high, and that's going to be nobody. That's going to stop the clock with five seconds. That didn't do much at all, but Glenn had to get rid of the ball. Almost uh, completed it to a fan leaning over the railing up there in the stands. Oh, barring a penalty, we should have one, possibly two more plays left in this three-point differential ball game. Five all, seconds on the clock. You know, that's all he could do, though, there, Jim, because he knew that clock was going to start when the official wound his arm or cranked his arm up, as it did, winding off five or six seconds. So he was throwing it away as much as anything to try and get one more shot at it. Anderson comes wide to the left. Potts goes wide to the right. Ricky Martin sets it as a flanker to the left. Bethay in the backfield. Toronto puts it out here for Anderson who drops the football. Picked up time is out but it cannot end on a defensive penalty so let's see what the penalty is. This has been a wild one. It really has. And now we got a little, little fight going down there. There's some folks getting after it. Flags go down again. But let's see what that initial penalty is for. Time is out. If it's an offensive penalty, this ball game is over. Defensive penalty, they get one more shot. And then there was another flag thrown after that in the scuffle. Well, I think as you were describing that, Bethea leaping across was several steps into the backfield. Now, is Wesley Ward going to tell us this game is over? <laughs> well, they might have offsetting penalties and one more play. 
offside on the defense. We will have an untimed down. Oh, well, they're going to play another play here. Now Lee is coming on. And I think, I can't believe that it's their only chance, of course, but then there's also the option of rare back and throw a long pass. They'll move it five yards, but Lee is going to have to try one of about 62 yards now here to tie it up. Foul, personal foul, number 75, White, in between downs, which will be enforced. Now they'll put that back, and that'll really take him out of Lee. A lot of conversation and pointing going on out there by both squads, yeah, particularly offset Michigan. The now they say offsetting penalty. So is that where we started? First of all, well, we'll just go with what Wesley Ward said. Offsetting penalties, and it'll be from 62 yards away that Lee will try to tie this up. Well, I thought it was an offsetting penalty situation, but. Now they're moving it back. So if, if that were the case, he has to bring it back. And he now has. The fouls will offset. We'll replay the down. There we go. Confusion. Have you seen it? Now let us see. Has there been a 67-yard field goal? I don't think so. Not that I recall. I was involved with the New Orleans Saints and called the one uh, that Tom Dempsey put through there set the record some years back but I've never seen one this distance. They've got three defensive backs Michigan has way back inside of 30 just in case there's some kind of fake. Now another whistle is blowing. Running in from the sidelines is Clyde DeStefano the back judge to say something to Wesley Ward the referee. Time has been out for at least five minutes. <laughs> And how, do you, how do you think he feels as a kicker? I send him in and say, okay, tie it up. It's 27 to 24, Michigan. And from 62 yards away, apparently Tony Lee will try to tie it up. Despite all the miscues of Michigan, just too good an offense. They manhandled them really as long as they had the football from the end of the first quarter on. And they had it when they needed it in that last drive.